Kenya, I love the people. I think that's number one. The welcome that I get from the people, every time I meet anyone, welcome. You don't see that in America. When I met they don't Bob, I was five when he first came to Delaware to live with his mother, um, and our mothers are sisters, so that close vibe was always there. Our in case you come across like a beautiful lady and wow. you want to compliment her. Oh, tell me, just, I yes. saw so many come in here, and I would just say, hello, uh -huh. hey babe, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> What do I say? So in that case, you can be like, Wewe ni mrembo. What? Wewe ni mrembo. Wewe re ni mrembo. I can't do the tongue. <laughs> oh, okay. Then wait, wait, then like, wait, wait. Unavutia. Navatia. Unavutia. Unavatia. Yeah, just saying like, you're appealing. Okay. Yes. Unavatia, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello everyone, my name is Hani Petra and today we have the amazing, the talented Jimmy Malcolm. Welcome Jimmy. Welcome to you too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the welcome. So Thank Jimmy, uh, yes. what brings you to Kenya? So, um, so I came here in July and I was working, I'm working on a project actually, um, a project that involved, you know, my cousin Steve and my cousin Bob with an orchestra. So I came here to find the musicians and the talent that Africa has to offer. Yeah. So you've been here close to about six months? No. Uh -huh. So I was here in July and then I left and then I came back in December. Okay. Uh, so are there any places you've been to besides Nairobi? Yes. I've been to Diani Beach. Um, I love it. I'm getting ready to go to Lemo or Limo. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lemo. Lemo. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I kind of love seeing the different places. So after being here for a while, I always want to take a vacation to see the culture. Nice, yeah. nice. And what is it about Kenya that you love the most? Kenya, I love the people. I think that's number one. The welcome that I get from the people. Every time I meet anyone, welcome. You don't see that in America. They don't use that word like that. And I love the hospitality, the warm welcome that I receive from each person, whether I'm walking on the street. Like here, like I'm from America, as you know, in Jamaica, but in the America part, it's hard to just walk up to anybody and say hi, hi hello, wagwan. But here, it's like I don't let a person pass, and I like that vibes. Yeah. So you have said you're in Kenya working on a project yes. with two of your cousins. Yes. Uh, could you tell us more about the project that you're working on? So the project that I'm working on consists of my cousin's voice. I'm producing it with Steve and another friend named Ray Zakosun. Ray Zakosun. Yeah. That, <laughs> that actually lives here in Kenya right now. He's from um, Somalia um, and I knew him a while. So he, he lives here. So. I was going to pick other places, but since he's here, this is the place that I picked. Um, and I've been working with a lot of producers here. So it's been working out pretty good here. Yeah. Okay, so the project that you're working on, I understand, yeah. is, revolves around your late cousin, Bob Marley. Yes. So could you tell us a little bit about how Bob was growing up, how your relationship with him was, what kind of a person was he? So Bob was like, and I mentioned this many times, like, you know, when you have a cousin, a brother cousin or sisters or brothers, that family vibes, you know? When I met Bob, I was five when he first came to Delaware to live with his mother um, and our mothers are sisters. So that close vibes was always there. Our houses was walking distance from each other. Um, he was he was an older cousin. I'm, it's a 16 uh, 16 hours, 16 hour years. Um, he's older than me, 16 years. So when I was five, that's when I met him. But then all the years growing up, you know, the bondship was beautiful. Um, learning a lot from him. I was a musician at an early age, so you know, um, Bob took me under his wings. And when I turned 18, that's when I started living with him in Miami to work on a gospel project with him and his mother. So. It's a lot of great memories that I have with Bob. There's so many, um, whether it's outside playing basketball in the yard or him running around with the soccer ball um, or hanging out with him and the kids. It's, it was just like a family vibes, like overall family vibes. 
So a lot of yeah. people know Bob just for his music. Okay, yeah. not just for, but most know him because of his music. But what else did Bob like doing? Like his hobbies? What else like was he really into? So, so as many people know, Bob loves soccer. And he spent lots of time outside kicking the ball. Um, but Bob loved music. So at night, I remember he was always writing songs. And we would always gather around. And we was all like in awe. Because he's just singing, playing his guitar. But, you know, as, as people, just like yourself, you have things that you like to do. And family vibes, like... When I say family vibes, just being around family and being around friends. So I knew he loved his friends, he loved his family. So he was just an all-around family man to me, like cousin. Um, and since you know, I was you know, younger than him, I looked up to him um, and I learned from him. Yeah. Can you please share with us some of your last moments with your cousin before he sadly passed away? So at the time, the last time when I was with him, this was in 79, 80. And it, it was right before he went on tour. I remember when he was going to leave, and I said, Bob, I want to come. I, did, I remember saying that, I took him outside. And he's like, no, Jimmy, stay, and I'll send for you. And, you know, stay, because I was working on a project with his mother. So his main priority for me at that time was to finish up my musical project with him that I was doing which we ended up finishing up after he passed because his vibes were so strong on his mother doing this gospel album. And I, I remember months later, I, I got a call that, hey, Bob is ready for you. But then after that, Bob got sick. So I, those thoughts always stay with me, what if? Um, and the, right now I'm working on the what if. It's like almost like I'm working with him again. So it's, it's almost like, a great energy because sometimes what you think is the end is just the beginning you know yeah. interesting interesting um you are also an artist you create music yes and in this field how do you relate to bob's music so since i was around when he was doing the music the music affects me differently i think because um you know, I, I relate to it great. It's like a lot of times people ask me, hey, Jimmy, what's your favorite Bob song? And that changes along the line, depending on the time or the feeling. Um, but I relate to it because it's messages. And just being around in that era when the music was coming out and us receiving it. And it's like, whoa, you know, but at the time, um, I didn't know that it was going to be around the world. Because like when I was younger, I start hearing his music because of course we would get it. Um, now when I hear it, it's all good vibes. And there's times and days that I just listen to Bob just for inspirational purpose. And especially now when I'm working on a project, it, you know, me listening to a lot of it to work with it, it's very special. So it does a still, it, it's like, I don't know, but there's a lot of artists that I listen to and then after I listen to the music, I don't want to listen to it anymore. With Bob, it's like, it, it never, I never get tired of it. It's always something that I love listening to. So yeah. I've read you're practically traveling across the world uh, in some ways, finding inspiration, working with Bob's sound, creating like a different type of music. Yeah. How has this been and what does this mean to you? Wow, so special. So I, I, so Germany, I started out working with an orchestra um, and that was amazing, the culture, because that's where classical music came from and that's why I picked that place. Um, coming to Kenya to continue the journey has been amazing. Um, I, you know, and I have more countries to go to and I think um, when you go to these different places and you feel the culture, you learn a lot. And it's just, un un some, some words are not even there yet because I'm still traveling, but it's the most amazing feeling traveling, meeting different musicians. And I, I love it. I, I love it. It's, it's very inspirational. Thank you. Um, what do you hope to accomplish from this project? Well, from this project, you know, what I want to accomplish is just 
having other people involved from different countries that normally wouldn't be involved in working on a project like this. So, you know, when I see the eyes of the producers and musicians to know that they're working, you know, with Bob, with Steven, um, it's, it's just great. I, I feel the same way they feel. Chills, I got chills talking about it. So it's like, um, because I know my cousin affected the world. So one of the things I wanted to do with this project was go to different places and incorporate their talent. Why now? Now's the time. You know, now's the time. That's all I can say about that. Now's the time. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so I also wanted to ask, uh, Bob's movie was released late last year. Yesterday we were out watching the premiere here in Kenya. Yes. Did the movie, I know you have watched it prior, but like this was like the final cut. Yeah. Did it match your expectations? Yes. Yes, it did. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good? Yeah. Okay, uh, brought, anything it, else you could add? Well, it brought, it brought some memories because I was sitting next to one of my best friends and at the end of the movie, I actually cried. Aww. I did. Um, it, when I first watched it, I didn't. Um, but um, the part when at the end and then he started talking about, you know, his passing, I'm very emotional. So it, the, the movie is very touching. Um, and I think the public will learn a lot about Bob from watching this movie. Um, there's a lot of critics out there that says whatever they're going to say. But me, I love the movie and I love what my family did with the movie. And I'm proud of the movie. Yes. How involved was the family in the creating of the movie? A hundred percent. They was in every, they was there every scene. I was living in India at the time and I flew to Jamaica when I heard they was filming there just to be a part of it with them I only you know I did one session and I saw their involvement so the approval was 100% from them because they actually played a big part in producing and ex executive producing in the movie um, across your travels have you met people who have a disdain or like a negative attitude towards like your genre of music towards reggae Rastafarians and like everything that you represent well, people are people, so people have opinions, and they're going to have their opinion, and that, that's the beauty of the world, that you could have. I haven't really ran upon anyone like that, but if I do, it's like, it's their opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything you'd like to see differently with how the world celebrates Bob Marley and your genre of music? Well, I think it speaks for itself. Um, I would say that because it's reaching who it's supposed to reach. Um, and I think even this generation now, because I do some performance um, every so often when I go to the schools. I'll be going to a school soon. Um, and I see how the kids are, the young ones, are just celebrating Bob's music. So I think that Bob's music is reaching the world, and I think that is consistently growing. Yeah, that's how I feel. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, switching the topic a little from music, um, coming from a country where like marijuana is legalized, yeah. uh, do you think uh, the rest of the world like should join in? Like, do you think like there are any benefits with the hub? Yeah, I think um, it's an individual thing. Some people use it as drugs. Some people use it as medicine. Um, I think it's been proven to be a, a more of a medicine than anything. Um, the people that uses it bad, of course, um, they're, they're not seeking the spiritualness of it or the, the medical parts of it. And I think that um, on that part of it, I, I think it should be legalized. Um, I use it when I have to as a medicine. So I, I think that it's benefits in it. And I think that when you check out cigarette smoking or alcohol, it has a different effect than herb have. So I think that I would definitely love to see it legalized in certain more, more places, especially in a continent like Africa. Okay, so as we wind up, um, last time we were together, I yeah. taught you a few Swahili words and yeah, we are doing good. that today as yeah, well nice, so are nice. you ready yeah i'm ready, <laughs> ready. so before i hop onto it is there any word that you'd want me to tell you yeah so gosh so i've been hearing this word 
when um, this, a greeting word. Uh -huh. What do they say again? Because I, I was at the radio station yesterday, uh -huh. and it's a greeting. What is that 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 normal greeting from from the Kenyas from from this country? Niaje. Niaje. Oh. Niaje. Niaje. Yeah. And that means welcome. No, it's like how are you like how are you faring on Niaje. Like Niaje. how's everything? Yeah? yeah. And then like you say Nikopoa. Okay, that's because we did that yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I told you that yet. Yeah, you told me that, and I heard it again, and it, it brought a memory to me, and that's why I brought it up mm -hmm. again today. Okay. Yeah. So um, another word would be, um, "I'm leaving. I'll see you later." Uh -huh. So, like, when someone is leaving, what would you say? Uh, so normally, someone would just say, "Kwaheri." Yeah, like literally it's just kwaheri like bye oh kwaheri yes kwaheri kwaheri but do you say bye sometimes like yeah well, normally we just say bye but okay. you can say kwaheri if you're speaking shen you can be like na jondo that's really like i heard that yeah i'm living yeah. na jondo i heard that <laughs> yeah you yeah. heard that yeah so i'm going in case you come across like a beautiful lady and wow. you want to compliment her. Oh, tell just, me, I yes. saw so many come in here and I would just say, hello, uh -huh. hey babe, what's up? <laughs> 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 so what do I say? So in that case, you can be like, wewe ni mrembo. What? Wewe ni mrembo. Wewe re re mrembo. I can't do the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, then wait, you can wait, be like, unavutia. Navatia. Unavutia. Unavatia. Yeah, just saying like you're peeling. Okay. Yes. Unavatia, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so, and then like I will tell you to go try ugali and nyamachoma with kachumbari. That's like a Kenyan specialty. I want to do that today for lunch. Yeah, so uh, if you're here, you it's have more, more oh he's more vegetarian oh, that has meat in it? Yeah. yeah then you can do like skuma wiki it's just kale greens from, sometimes cooked in coconut okay with ugali okay and then in the evening you eat mokimo okay yes <laughs> so, I'm, I'm gonna try that i'm gonna try it for real you will okay i have a cook that can okay. assist me i'm gonna tell her what to i'll do. wait for your feedback yeah so yeah. as we wind up is there anything you'd like to tell the people Kenya, love you. How do you say I love you in... Nakupenda. Nawapenda, because you're speaking to everyone. Nawapenda. Nawapenda, Kenya. And to make it better, you can say Nakulombotov. Nakulombotov. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. That has been Jimmy Malcolm. Because <laughs> <don't use> <laughs> guys, uh, guys, guys, okay, cut out the last. Yeah. Right. No, no kisses in Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much.